Now in part C, we've got to find the tension in the string here. Now there's several ways that I could do this, but what I've got to do is consider either particle P or particle Q and resolve basically to the right and get the, an equation involving force equals mass times acceleration. Now, I prefer in this example to consider P. Why? Because, well, it's just got fewer forces really, I suppose. So, I'm going to consider P, but you should get the same answer, obviously, if you consider particle Q. And I'll leave it up to you to try and do that. Okay, consider P anyway. So what I'm going to do is resolve in the direction of motion to the right, taking right then as being positive. So considering just P alone, the forces that act on P, we have got T to the right, so we've got T, and then we've got minus mu times 2G to the left, okay, so that's why it's minus. Obviously these two forces don't come into play because they're at right angles to the direction of motion that we're resolving in. Okay, so this is the overall force acting on P and it's equal to the mass times acceleration. And the mass of P is 2 kilograms, so that's 2. And the acceleration we know is 4 thirds of a meter per second per second, so that's 2 times 4 thirds. Okay, we already know that mu from part B was 10 over 21, so I'm going to substitute that in. So we have T minus um, 2G times mu, so mu was 10 over 21, that was the exact value. Then we have equals 2 times 4 thirds, well that's going to be 8 thirds. Might as well take that opportunity to work that out. So, this term becomes 20g over 21, and if I add that to both sides, I get that t is going to equal 8 thirds then, plus 20g over 21. And if you work that out on a calculator, taking g to be 9.8, you find that we get that t equals exactly 12 newtons. Okay?